Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy, and today we're doing some Dollar Tree hacks, tips, and tricks just to make your life a little bit easier. So let's get started. If you decorate for the different holiday seasons, finding a place to put larger things is sometimes a challenge. So for your large signs and pictures, I take mine and put them right under my couch so that nobody knows they're there and then I can pull them out when I take my decorations down. So another hidden option, you guys have seen this before. I made this about three years ago, this click box. This is holding my remotes. It's kind of built up and I put a lot of other stuff in there too. I also keep my Wi-Fi password right there in the little clothespin. So I'm gonna replace this. It's done its job for the last three or four years. I can't even remember, but I'm looking for places where I can hide my remotes because I don't like to see them, but I always wanna know where they are. So if you use the back of your pillow, these are the pillows that came with the couches that we purchased. So I'm gonna take my remotes and I'm really only gonna be using two of them. One is for the TV and then one is for our fan. And I took some Dollar Tree fabric that's kind of close to the color of the back of my pillow. It doesn't really matter because it's not going to be seen, but I'm going to use my mini iron to get that fabric straightened out and flattened out. And I'm going to use the fold of the fabric. So that'll be the top of our pocket because it's already finished. So I'm just going to make some seams around the edges and just fold those sides in, iron those down and make a little pocket. This is doubled over, so I'll have to glue the inside and the top part so that it stays snug as a bug in a rug. And then I'm gonna take some hot glue and glue around three of those edges to make this a pocket, place it on the back of my pillow, and now I can put all of my remotes, well, two of my remotes, into this little pocket, and then I'll always know where they are. Now, you could either sew this or use fabric adhesive. I get this from Walmart, but the super glue works pretty well too, and if I ever wanna take it off, I can just pull that all off of the back of my pillow. I'll just tuck those into my pocket and then put it on the couch and nobody knows that it's there. You can't see it, but you'll always have them handy. So this is our grandbaby number five. This is Carter James and he just turned one year old. And so we did a little party for him. My daughter sent me a couple of inspirational pictures from Pinterest or Instagram. I don't know where these are from, but anyway, she wanted to do the theme of football. So I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree items and try to do as much as we can on a budget. I'm not gonna show you all of the party or the things that we did all at once, but I am gonna break it up little by little so you can see what we did. The first thing I did was took some paper plates. These are in packages of 24. I'm gonna make a little football banner. So I just cut these out and made a little triangle, a little flag. I took the first piece that I cut and left the little rim on there so that I could use that as a template for the rest of them. I ended up making about 24, no, I think I did like 20 little flags. And then we did use the rest of them for the party itself, but it was a lot easier to measure and this took no time at all. And then I'm gonna take my little hole punch and make holes at the top corners of my little Little banner and then once I get those all done I'm gonna take my white paint pen and I'm just gonna do the little laces of a football now the one in the inspiration piece those were on fabric of some sort which you could totally do too but I thought this was really sweet and a super easy and economical way to make a banner what I ended up doing is taking the twine and I'm gonna feed that all the way on there and make it super, super long because I'm doing this at my house and then I'll take it over to her house later and then I can cut those little banners down and use them in the places that I want and they'll fit on there. So I'm also gonna leave a lot of twine at the end of both, a lot, a lot, so that I can cut them and we'll have enough on each end to attach to whatever it is that we're using. So I'm back at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna pick up a few of these little pockets for your cell phone. These have adhesive on the back and they can be used for what they're intended, but I'm gonna use them for a bunch of different things. So since I'm getting rid of my click box with my remotes and my Wi-Fi password, I'm gonna use this little pocket to put my Wi-Fi password on. This is the one I always use for illustration purposes. It's the Wi-Fi password, ask my wife. That's the Wi-Fi password that my nail salon uses and I just always thought that was so stinking cute. So hiding this is the name of the game. I'm gonna put this into my little pocket and then place that on the back of a picture frame. I'm actually just using the fake card that's inside of the little pocket. Pocket, and then I have it all the time. If anybody needs my Wi-Fi password, it's right there, but nobody can see it.
Another way to use these pockets along the same lines, if you're like me and you only retain water, you might forget those passwords every now and then. So I'm gonna use one of these pockets, again, using the back side of the little fake card that's inside, and I'm gonna write down my password for whatever it is I need to remember. You can put more than one on there and just always have it handy, but still out of sight. And I'm just gonna take off that backing sheet and put it on the bottom of my keyboard for my computer. This is actually my mom's old computer. So I'm gonna put it at the bottom there and and then I always have it handy. I can just pull it out from the side and then replace it so easily. And then another idea I had was to use the card holder. This one was a little bit cuter with the design, but you can add this as a gift and put a gift card inside or, or cash, whatever you wanna put inside and then add that to your birthday card. And then now you've got a two for one gift with the pocket holder that they can place on the back of their cell phone. Okay, so back to Carter's birthday party. I'm gonna take some of these green Solo cups from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use my white paint pen again and just draw on some little yard lines. I added some numbers on the side and then made little hash marks to make it look like a, a football field. I thought this was a super cute way to add some more football and get the theme going for this party. Super easy and super cheap, but I think it looks so adorable. And again, I'm gonna show you how the whole party turned out with our decorations at the end of this video. And now right back into our adhesive pockets. If you've ever answered the door and there were some Girl Scout cookies being sold, but you didn't have any cash, I don't usually carry cash much anymore. So this is a good way if you find a cabinet on the inside, someplace close to the front door, if those cookies show up or some kind of donation or school group comes and needs some cash, you have it handy. And again, it's hidden and out of sight until you need it. Now, I was really excited to find this black and white buffalo check or gingham one. And so I'm gonna actually use it for its purposes intended. I'm gonna take off the backing sheet and put that on the back of my phone. I clean that off first. Now, I'm not a big fan of putting your actual debit card or ID in there, so I'm not gonna use it for that, but one thing you can use it for are your business cards. So if you ever run into a friend or just get into a conversation with someone and you want to give your business card to them, you have them handy. You can also use it for your other job, which is spreading the gospel, and so I put my Jesus cards in there as well. So if someone needs some inspiration or uplifting you can pass this out and i'll have these linked in the description box below where you can find them they're non-denominational they're not tied to any church but i think that's a really good way to be able to have that handy in case you find someone that needs a little lifting up So now back to hidden functionality and staying with our phone accessories, I'm always trying to find a way of hiding our room freshener in the bathroom. The area on the side of your cabinet might be a place where you can use this hack. I'm gonna take one of these phone holders with the little ring on it, take that adhesive off of there. And if you stick this to the side of your cabinet, I don't think it's gonna ruin the paint or anything, but if you, know, if you wanna be careful, you could use command strips. But I'm gonna take that and use that to hook my air freshener on. And then now when you walk in and see your pretties that you've you know, decorated your bathroom in, you don't have to see that room freshener and you can use it and just put it right back. So back to our football theme birthday, since those yard lines were so easy to do and was making quick work of this decorating and making cuteness for the party, I decided to do the same thing on these Dollar Tree vases and I'm gonna be using these as centerpieces. So once I got my lines all drawn on there and they were dried, I'm gonna take some onion grass from the Dollar Tree I took three bundles of those. I'm gonna pop one into each of my vases. And then my daughter picked up these cute little football picks from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna place those in there. I'm gonna actually add his name in just a second, but you can see how cute they are looking through that glasses or peeking through there. And then I took some Dollar Tree mums and some eucalyptus. I'm gonna add those to the bottom and just make this a super simple arrangement. And I added some little pumpkins because he is our little pumpkin and it is fall. And then using my white paint pen again I'm just going to write Carter James on each of the footballs and then pop those back into the centerpieces these turned out so cute and I was getting better and better at drawing straight lines onto curved edges but I think these turned out so adorable 
So I'm always looking for ways to make storage and functionality hidden and pretty in some cases. So I have these two Amazon boxes. One of these are from the mystery box challenge that Jennifer sent me from a little bit of Calm and Crazy. And then Dollar Tree has their contact paper. I just found a new one, this pretty blue and white design. And so I'm gonna use that one for this little hack. I'm gonna wrap these boxes in this contact paper and it doesn't have to be a great job. Now you do want to first decide if you're going to have these going, you know, long ways or if you're going to use the small sides. So that's going to depend on where you put your seams. So I'm just going to wrap this up and then at the bottom I'm going to cut those corners so that I can fold those edges down and it looks all nice and finished. And then I'll do the same thing for the top and then push that inward into the box itself. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to end up covering up the top part. So Dollar Tree carries these 100% polyester pillowcases and FYI this would be perfect if you're going to do some sublimation if you have a you know a heat press and sublimation printer that'll be for another video but I'm going to take two of these and turn them inside out and then I'm going to use that as the liner for my boxes and then I'm just going to pull the edges down and now that outside edge is finished because we turned it inside out and then pull that down as far or as short as you want it I think it just gives it a really pretty edge and it matches our contact paper and then you can put some them not so pretty things inside of them and then on the outside it just looks like pretty decor you do want to make sure that your seam from your pillowcase if you are using the more narrow side make sure those seams aren't showing so for these boxes I'm going to use these for my light bulbs and then my extension cords so I'll just pile those in there I'm putting this on a shelf and then putting some pretties around it so you can't see it. But I think this is a really cute way to disguise those things, but also keep them organized and all in one place. So another way you can use these Dollar Tree pillowcases, I found one with some writing on it. All I could see was family and friends. And so I'm gonna use that as our outside pillowcase. And it was perfect because I wanna make this into kind of like a travel pillowcase. So what I'm gonna do is turn that one inside out. You definitely wanna iron this. I'm gonna show you how I ironed it after I'm done putting it together. But once it's inside out, I'm gonna make sure that all of the corners of the little bottom corners are totally square so they're all all the way pulled out because I'm going to use some hot glue to attach my white pillowcase to the gray one and so I'm using my hot glue again you could sew this and make it super heavy duty and maybe even if you did this with some more expensive pillowcases with a higher thread count it might matter but this is just kind of for our littles so that when they come over they can have their goodies all in one place so after I get that all glued on the three sides I'm going to turn it back inside out and technically you could glue it all four sides at the same time and I didn't think of that until afterwards but I turned it back outside right or right side out whichever way that goes and then I'm going to take some more hot glue and attach the top seam or the top part of my pillowcase to the outer pillowcase well you see what I'm doing there and I thought it was really cute to leave a little bit of it sticking out so it looks like an edging of some sort and then once I get that done, I'm gonna take my scissors and in the hem on the inside, I'm gonna make a little hole with my scissors. And then that way that's gonna leave that little tubed area available. So I'll take some jute twine and I threaded my long needle with it. And then I turn my needle upside down or you know backwards. So it's not going with the pointy edge first, it's going forward with the softer edge or you know the more blunt edge so that it doesn't poke a bunch of holes into my fabric. And then once I get that all the way through I'm just going to keep gathering it and then this is going to be the drawstring for our little sack and then I took a couple of wooden beads and I'm going to feed those onto the ends of my jute twine and tie a couple of knots so they don't come off and now you can just pull the string so that it closes and all your goodies don't fall out so another space saver that we had it came with our house when we first bought it is this ironing board that pulls down it attaches to the back of the door and then you can just pull it down when you need it and then when you're done I ironing whatever you're doing just push it back up and close the door and I'll have that linked or something close to this in the description box below
So now I can put my pillow into my pillowcase and I'm putting it on the doubled up one inside of the white one that's in there. And then on the other side where there's the extra pocket, I'm gonna place, well, these are Cadence's clothes, mine are a lot bigger. <laughs> and so I'm gonna push those into that little pocket. And now you can take this to a slumber party or wherever you want. And you can stick your toothpaste and toothbrush, whatever you need for a slumber party. And I love that this one says faith, family, and friends. So another travel idea in the Dollar Tree Plus section, I found these neck pillows and they had some really cute ones. These are $5. They even had this mermaid one. I really love this. It has the little fin at the end. I thought this would be so adorable. Cadence would love this, but I had to have one that had a zipper on the back. So I picked up this gray one and this was an idea that my daughter actually told me about. She probably saw it online or something, but I'm gonna take the tags off and then pull out that mushy stuff from inside of the pillow and it's that memory foam stuff. So this is not going to be as comfy as this thing is, but what you can do instead of taking a carry-on with you, you can roll up some clothes and stick it into the form of your neck pillow. And I thought I would take this time to give some shout outs for a couple of t-shirts that I got from some sweet viewers. I have this adorable Be The Light t-shirt from Bonnie Wilson in Benton, Tennessee. And then this yellow t-shirt, I love this one, from Lorraine Stevens in Palm Coast, Florida. And then might as well go ahead and plug my own. This is in our merch store. It says, Jesus is the glue that holds me together. So I'm just gonna roll those up and tuck them into my neck pillow. If they're still lumpy and not exactly smooth around there, you can just mush it around and make it nice and flat and super comfy to use on the plane or when you're traveling. So who knew there would be so much function in phone accessories? I'm gonna pick up one of these phone stands. Now, of course, there's all kinds of different ones on the market and you can get them for all kinds of different prices, but I think $1.25 is really a good deal. I don't always love all of the designs that they have, but I did find this super cutie patootie one behind some others. And so of course you can just use this as a phone stand, but this is perfect if you put this in your purse or in your diaper bag when you go to a restaurant and you need to hold the phone up for the babies. Instead of using a glass of water and a fork to stand your phone up, you can use this and then just tuck it away when you're done. You can also grab one of these plate holders. These are the smaller ones. Put this on the kitchen counter and put something really pretty in it for your regular decor so that you have it handy when you wanna use your iPad to read a recipe while you're cooking. Now, of course, I won't be using this, but Michael J will find this very handy. Here's another super easy party display for your football theme. I'm gonna take one of Dollar Tree's black foam boards and I'm gonna get online and look for football plays, you know, where they do the X's and O's. And then I used a piece of chalk to just draw that out onto my black board. And you see my pretty pink mason jar. That's part of our craft room makeover that one of these days I will sometime get out. It's almost done, but you know, anyway. <laughs> So I'm just gonna get that on there with chalk. Now you could leave it like that, but I was afraid that it would get mush or you know smeared. So I'm gonna go back with my white paint pen and draw those lines in. And then at the top, I'm gonna put Carson, no, not Carson, Carter, number five, not number two. Carter's playbook. And then I'll give it some little accents by putting the little dots on all of the ends of my letters. And that's all there is to it. And we just put this up against the fireplace and you'll see it at the end, but it's super cute and only cost $1.25. So when I was in the frame aisle, I noticed there was a whole bunch of new frames that Dollar Tree is carrying. Now I had seen the acrylic frames before and they had all different sizes. I've used one of the smaller magnetic ones for scripture cards for your refrigerator in another video, but this time I picked up two eight by eight acrylic frames. And so I'm gonna also grab some glittery paper from the Crafter Square and I'm just gonna use the inside paper to make a template so that I can cut out that paper to be the right size. And then I'm gonna take some 5 8 inch grosgrain ribbon in black, also from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut four strips of that and then lay that in a tic-tac-toe pattern. So I'll just hot glue that onto my paper and then flip that over 
and let those sides fold around to the back and then glue those down as well. And then I'll just pull off that protective sheet that's on the acrylic frame and then slip my tic-tac-toe paper into one of those frames. And then I'll take the other one and I'm gonna glue that to the bottom of the other one. Well, you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna glue them together so that the stands for the frames are on each side. You see what I'm saying? And then now we have a little tray that we can use a dry erase marker on. So when you're driving with the kids, they can play tic-tac-toe in the back seat and rub off the X's and O's when they're done. And then to keep my pen handy, I'm gonna take one of those binder clips from the Dollar Tree and just pop it right on the side. And now you're ready to roll and there shouldn't be any fights in the back seat. So now getting back to our party, I thought these were really cute. I found these little favor boxes at the Dollar Tree and I thought they looked like a referee's shirt. So we're gonna fill those up with some goodies for the party and put them on the table. And then to make our photo backdrop with the balloon side, I had Michael J go get a four by eight piece of wood. And this is either half inch or quarter inch. I forgot what he said. Darn it. Well, anyway, we're going to make some shapes. I just drew on an arch for part of it, and that's going to be the whole four feet tall. And then on the side, I'm just doing a little side piece. That's going to be where our lines and numbers are for the football field. And then I'm going to cut out a one. And we just used a T-square to make those edges straight. And then he's going to cut down the big pieces using his circular saw. And then for the corners and the little pieces, we're just using the jigsaw. And then once we get everything cut out, we're gonna go ahead and sand everything, including the number one. This always comes in handy because it's cordless and I love it. I'll have all of these tools linked in the description box below. And it's always so fun working in the garage with Michael J because he can pretty much do anything. So I just tell him what to do. I draw the lines and then I draw the lines. I don't really draw the lines, but I draw the lines for him to cut and then we do the project together. And this was really fun because we were doing it for Carter. And then to get in those little nooks and crannies where I rounded the edges of my number one, I'm gonna use this Dremel tool with the sanding attachment. And that way everything's nice and smooth. So then I just laid everything out on a piece of plastic on a table. And then we're gonna take some old house paint from a previous house and paint both of those big boards with this creamy color. Now he painted the smaller one as well as the big one. I'm gonna leave the big one this off-white color, but then I'm gonna use the smaller one and paint that in my celery green chalk paint but he decided to paint it anyway so that my chalk paint wouldn't kind of soak into that MDF. So this is kind of being used as a primer. And we're gonna make sure to get all of the fronts and the backs. These are actually the backs right now. And then we're gonna flip them over once that dries and then paint the other side. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna take that celery, I'm just gonna pour it onto that board and then use my faux Annie Sloan chalk paint brush and I have these linked in the description box below and get that all painted up. I'm gonna actually end up doing a couple of coats of this to make sure it's a nice, pretty green. And then I'm gonna use my mineral chalk paint to paint my one. I should have had him primer this one too, but the mineral is a little bit darker, so nothing poked through, but it did kind of take a little bit more of that paint. So then I wanna do an outline around the one, and to do that, I just use some painter's tape, and then I'm gonna go around the edges, and the way to get it the same distance or the same size all the way around is I just went all the way to the end of the corner, or you know, the bottom, and then folded it around to the top, and then that's gonna keep it the same distance all the way around. And then I'll go in with a second Second piece to make those stripes of my one. And then anywhere where it was kind of a corner, it would be good if you use some electrical tape because that will bend. But I just was really careful around those edges when I was painting it with a smaller bristle brush. And then I used a little makeup sponge and dabbed that on in between those stripes. And I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in white to do that. And then I'm just gonna use my adhesive vinyl and my Cricut cutting machine to cut out all of the numbers and the lines. I don't even have to use any transfer tape to put these on because they're nice and big. So I'm just gonna pull them off of the backing sheet and this is gonna tuck behind the taller board. So I don't have to go all the way to the end. I just wanna make sure that my curved edge is right. So I'm gonna put three long lines and then I put my 10 yard line, my 20 yard line, 
line and then my 30 yard line and then i made a little bit shorter ones right in between i only had enough space for one so you could also just use some white regular tape if you don't have a cutting machine and then just paint the numbers on with a white paint pen and you could just paint the lines too and then for my taller piece i'm going to cut out carter's first down and do those separately this i did have to use you know the transfer tape and i'll have the fonts listed in the description box below in case you ever want to make this and then once i got all of my letters and numbers on then i'm going to wait until i get it to their house where we had the party to put it all together and add my balloon semi-arch to the side. So before I show you how it all turned out, I wanted to give a special shout out and praise report for our sweet friend, Myrta, who just finished her last round of chemo. We've all been praying fervently for her and for her complete healing and restoration. So congratulations, Myrta. We love you and we're so very happy for you and your beautiful family. And now for Carter's first down football party on a budget. I think this turned out so super cutie patootie, just like him. We got the balloons from Amazon. You can see how I cut the banner to put in different places. Of course, Dallas was playing, so we had to add Grandma Margie's Dallas Cowboys sweatshirt. And then we had our little cheerleaders who were wearing some vintage cheerleading outfits. They were so sweet. They did some face painting outside. And there's our crazy cadence. And then Michael J's there. There's our daughter, Christine, the referee of the place. <laughs> she got caught eating a cookie. And our sweet friend, Emily, made homemade cookies. Those were so good. They're already gone from there. But we had some really good taco salads and a bunch of goodies. And it was just such a great time and so much fun. And then, of course, it was time for happy birthday and this crazy family. And here's some shots of the backdrop and I didn't show how to do the balloons but I just took some string and threaded it onto a needle and then poked it through the little balloon knot parts there and it was kind of a cluster so <laughs> I didn't think I needed to show you guys that. Maybe I'll do that in another video but here's the tables and all of the goodies and we got cupcakes and this was a Dollar Tree sign the everyday ga is day game day. I can't speak. And then there's Emily's cookies. They were already gone by the time I had taken some pictures. Anyway, here's outside. I didn't get a good shot of the centerpieces either, darn it. And then Kennedy, our daughter, made this little coloring sheet for the kids. And then there's Kennedy and Taylor with Carter. And then Michael J with Carter. And this is perfect for taking pictures. And I have to say, praying babies are so beautiful and so of course we're praying before the meal and here's some sweet faces that got painted <laughs> by Ken uh, by I think it was Kennedy, Cadence, and Karis, and our sweet Olivia, and Connor is Mario Brothers, and then our beautiful baby boy, Carter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. If you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as that little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. I hope everyone has a blessed day, and remember to always be the light. Bye!